How you doing guys? I'm Sean Welcome to Rambles with my camera. Guys, today's ramble. Today's video is going to be another video for part of my series on uh, the story behind the photographs. My photographs, I should say. And this photograph here, you know, the whole purpose of this um, concept of me sharing the, the story behind the photographs, it's not because the photographs themselves are technically perfect or they are award winning uh, perfect. They're just photographs that mean something special to me and I'm using this channel and um, as a way of me to document and put down you know what how I took a photograph the story behind it and not just for me or for yourselves to see it but for other people maybe in the future to sit and look and say there's what happens at the photograph or there's how the photograph is taken and this one here and if you're not familiar with the series please check the link up above there on the right hand side check out the other uh, photographs as well that I've shared but this photograph here a series of photographs is it's off actually of a guy called John Kitson and he was from the uh, West Belfast where I came from in Northern Ireland and originally from the Shangle Road but he moved over to the Falls Road area and he was a character and when I say he was a character he was a character like he had his challenges with alcohol and you know he would have been seen on the Falls Road the corner of the Falls Road and the Springfield Road the bottom of the Springfield Road um, any given day you would have heard him before you'd have seen him because you let a roar out of him and basically you know people have different views on him i was you know when you seen him if he had a lot of drink on told him probably like us all when i used to drink i used to be a bit of a madman too like because when the drink goes in the wood goes out and basically um you know depending on how much drink he'd have you'd heard him and he used to have a lot of dogs and uh I never had any hassle with him whatsoever, but this is taken, taken on a Sunday morning and I'm walking down through uh, Clannard, um, heading down towards the Falls Road. And as I said, the scene, he was called Crazy Horse, although his name was John Kitson. He knew himself as Crazy Horse. We all knew him as Crazy Horse. And uh, there was a bit of a dispute on why he was called Crazy Horse. But the fact is, is that although he had a tattoo of Native American and then Crazy Horse on his arm. That wasn't the reason why he called Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse was a type of whiskey, I believe, that it was his his favourite drink when he was in England, in London. And whilst he was in London, whilst he actually was in jail as well, he was actually in jail with the Crazy. Now, this is not a myth. No, there's a lot of urban legends behind people's stories. But the fact of the matter was, he was in um, jail with... And he was one of the Cray's bodyguards whilst he was there. So he's a bit of a tough guy. Um, and as I say, the alcohol, he was known for that. But personally speaking, I never encountered any badness from him. And I don't think any of our people, well, maybe somebody did. But I never witnessed it. And he certainly had, uh, he was a character. And I think a likeable character. So I'm walking down the street on a Sunday. And of course, I'd crossed the path, the footpath. And there I see Crazy Horse coming up towards me, carrying a bottle of Mondays, um, alcohol, wine. And he had his dog with him. And here's me, shit. I had my camera, like, here's me, shit. And as I got approached him, because he didn't know what way he was going to react, he usually had a big roar at me. Nine times out of ten, he had the shirt off him, and the tattoos and the muscles, and he's screaming, Aah! But as he came up towards me at the camera, here's me, shit, there's Crazy Horse. Talking to myself, I was on my own. Talking to myself a lot. Even hear answers as well. So who's a mad man here? But he smiled and he stopped. And he said, you, what country are you from? And I went here in Ireland. He said, do you want to take a photograph of me? I said, do you? Do you want to take a photograph of my dog? I said, do you? And he got the bottle of um, wine. So he's standing up at this stage and he held and he held the bottle of wine up. But something my mind said, I, I never like to capitalise on anybody's situation. But somebody, something said my mind said, don't take that photograph because that's his normal photograph, you know, holding the bottle of wine up. I took a photograph before of him, several photographs of him over the years. And he's always this business holding the, the bottle of wine up, bottle of Mondays up. And something said my mind said not to take it. And I said, um, called him Crazy Horse, you, you know, I said, Crazy Horse, you put the put the bottle down a second, man, just to see they got, 
and you can look and say, well, you sort of, you, you, you manipulated a photograph there. I just didn't want to take that photograph off him because it's been done a hundred times. And he wasn't drunk at this stage, by the way, he was sober. And I said, can I get a photograph of you and the dog? And he said, of course, I can't remember the name of the dog anyway. And he said, of course you can. He gets down and uh, I go ahead and takes a photograph of him. And let me see if I get the photograph. This one here. Let me open this up here. He called the dog over and a wee dog and he gave his dog a kiss on the lip. And I took it. I was shooting um, a Canon F1N with 35mm lens. And I took, these are the photographs that I took of him. And he took three frames in total. That's the first frame there. When I seen that happening, I knew I captured something special. Rather than the bottle of wine being held up, I knew that I captured something. And the love of a man for his dog, the love of a dog for the man, love the pog and up. And I have to say, I was intimidated by him. And like anybody knows me from Belfast, I'm not a soft touch, in other words. Um, there's not many things intimidate me, and there's certainly not many people would intimidate me. I'm not saying that to try to blow myself out of thing, but genuinely, I'm, I, I, I'm not really intimidated by anybody. But he had that presence, that demeanour, that when you met him, that you actually felt his presence, his energy. Um, strong man. This is even long before I even heard about the Crays. Um, if you're not familiar with the Crays, it's uh, Ronnie and Reggie Cray. I'll put, well, you'll see the photographs of them. Check it out yourself on Google. But he had this energy as strong. But when I seen that, I seen a softness, a tenderness to him. And it sort of surprised me. And he was sober. And he was joking. And I got that photograph. I'm starting now to move around. And you can see the bottle of Mondays in his hand. You can also see his slippers. If you look at the composition of this, these are sort of poor scans, by the way. They're from an agus. But if you look at the composition there, I've cut off his feet, I've cut off the bottom of his slippers. That was down to me being nervous, I have to say, because that's just two frames now, that's a second frame. And he's joking, uh, he's joking about the dog and things like that. I took that photograph. Now I'm trying to uh, position myself, and I'm now moving backwards on the footpath. You can see the bag there in the bottom uh, corner of that um, photograph, that's his bag. And I'm starting now to move back. It's a wee small narrow footpath. And in this photograph, completely not staged, this is his call. He chose, he called the dog over and he sat. Now I always shot full frame. I filled the frame and I had black and white negative. Um, I always, my negative carrier, I would have failed out the edges of it. So I got that black line around. I printed full frame, full frame. That was at full whack. I was a 35mm, I'm almost 100% positive it was a 35mm lens, because I always normally had a 35mm lens on my uh, Canon F1N. I think it was a Tamron 35mm. But I couldn't get any back any further, because I'm on a footpath, and then there's a curb there, and then there's a road, and there was a car parked up tight against the curb. So I'm actually leaning up against the car. I can't get any back any further. If I hadn't went down any further, I'd have dented their man's car or woman's car. And that was as far as I got it. And I took that shot. The dog's cut off at the back. His foot's cut off and his legs cut off at the side. But to me, as, if, as somebody who knew Crazy Horse, and I posted this on my Facebook page, and the response from people from West Belfast, where I grew up, um was phenomenal and it's not about photography to me it's not about getting it perfect it's about capturing something that is going to mean something to somebody it may be you it may be your neighbor maybe you capturing it and a complete stranger getting something from it and that's one of them photographs now you could be looking at this from america and sitting saying to yourself shit sean that's a, it's a shit photograph you cut it included the dogs back in or you could have moved back or well it couldn't have but to me it's a great photograph because it's shown a side of a man that the majority of his only didn't get to see the majority of people only got to see the drunk 
the man drunk and blocked and shouting and cursing and swearing. Um, I got to see a tenderness in, the, in their photographs. They have three frames that I got to meet, meet him. We talked briefly. We talked about London and talked about England. And he said we'd get a couple of photographs. I went down, as I said, the following week and brought him photographs down. And I'm kicking myself I didn't take more photographs. I was intimidated by him. Like, and he was a lovely man. But he just... Um, I don't know. It was his strength um, of character intimidated me. But um, that's the story behind these photographs. And as I say, you know, technically are they the feet cut off or... To me it didn't matter. Um, I was getting allowed, I was allowed into uh, somebody's, somebody's space. He let me into his zone. And I've captured, I think I've captured the real crazy horse, John Kitson. Um, I think they have three photographs captured the side of, of a man that, as I say, the majority of people didn't get to see. So that's what this, these stories behind the photographs is all about. When you're out taking photographs, I would say, tell you that if you're a street photographer, social documentary, or a hobbyist, or just doing it, hobbyist is a street photography and social documentary is, is some class. What I meant to say was, unless you, unless you just occasionally take a photograph out, you might have a camera in the house, like taking photographs of your family members, uh, might just occasionally once away at a wedding taking a photograph. No matter what you're doing with the camera, try to remember that you are really capturing something of importance. Every single person we're photographing, or you're photographing, there's a story behind him. Sometimes a photograph will capture it, other times that you need to hear a story from the person who took it. Or you might take a photograph and not realise and that you've took a photograph of someone and then you put it on the internet and somebody said, you know who you've just photographed? That guy was a war hero or that guy was, uh, you know, an amazing singer in the 1950s. And I think photography to me, that's what it's all about. It's not about getting it technically right. It's not about, you know, perfectly sharp. It's not about, you know, how many likes you get or how many, you know, shares you get. How many people say it's a great photograph. To me, I think photography is special because we are genuinely capturing the present so those in the future can look back at the past. I'm blessed that I got to meet that man on that side of the road. He died shortly after that, a couple of years after it. Um, but I got to get photographs of him. And to me, it's better than taking that shot with him standing with a big bottle of Mondays. Um, if you looked at the other photograph there, that he's got the bottle in his hand there. Do you know? I didn't tell him to shield it. I just said, no, I want to get a photograph of you, the dog type thing, do you know? And I think he was happy at that because he realised that I wasn't looking the stereotypical photograph of Crazy Horse that everybody else would probably want to get. Maybe he was play acting to the camera every time because he liked the adoration, I don't know. But that photograph there of him holding the dog's paw, or each other holding each other's hands, hands stroke paw, to me I choose the love that that man had um, for his dog and that with a kiss says it all. There you go guys, the story behind my photographs, Crazy Horse, uh, John Kitson, West Belfast man, um, a man you don't meet every day, let's put it that way. And uh, if you haven't seen the other videos of the other photographs I'm taking, it's going to be an ongoing series, check the links up on the right hand side there, have a wee look and see what you think. And uh, leave your comments down below, leave your thoughts, what do you think of the story. But put a wee bit of heart into your uh, photography because in reality it's, I keep saying it because it's something I, I thought of years ago when I was teaching photography up in Belfast. And I was saying that people like, we're capturing the present so those in the future can look back in the past. We think when we're taking a photograph you see that it's for this moment in time. And yes, technically that is the case, we're taking a photograph now. But in the bigger picture of things it's not. It's really for people in the future to be looking back at the past so we're capturing the present so those in the future can look back at the past and it doesn't have to be perfectly composed perfectly lit things like that that does help there's no question about it it's a story behind the photograph i believe and uh there you go a crazy horse in a better place he's probably doing the door 
up in the pearly gates going into heaven. Or maybe he's doing the door down below with his mates from the, the Cray brothers, the Cray twins. Who knows? Um, but I say no matter where he is, he's possibly uh, bringing his own uniqueness to that place. Guys, send you love from Ireland. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. You can check me on Twitter and on Facebook and also ramblesmycamera.com and also the Flickr page. All the links are down below, guys. Thanks again and send you love from Ireland.